Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome to the Garden of Terror. Let's say hi to the team because it's time to play another match of Heroes of the Storm. In this video, I'm going to be focusing on giving you a guide on how to play Lunara, the latest hero of the game. But obviously, if you're watching this in the future, they'll likely have come out with a couple of different ones. Um, as far as the team compositions go, we got Sergeant Hammer, Diablo, Lunara, Abathur and Muradin. So we sort of got Double Warrior and they got Abathur, Sonya, Lunara, Sylvanas and Thrall. So they have a lot more damage output than we do, which means that for my goal, or my goal for this game and for this hero, is to do maximum amounts of damage. I may go for a little bit of a defensive talent later on, but the first one we'll go and pick is the Cruel Spores. And I go over the reasoning behind certain talents in just a minute as well. For this video, I will be going over the abilities that I got. I'm going to try and explain how the hero works. And I will also focus on... Um, you know, obviously playing the game, explaining the talent selection, going over different options as far as the talent selections go, and just trying to explain to you how to become a better Lunara player, all the while playing a game. Um, so, the most important thing to note about this hero right off the bat is that I am a damage dealer. I'm a hero um, killer, basically. And even though a lot of people sort of look at this hero at the portrait and you're like, okay, she's a support, right? She's a daughter of scenarios, all that shenanigans. She's a straight up damage dealer and she's extremely good at it. Um, her damaging abilities really come from uh, the damage over time that she applies with her passive trait. So every single damaging skill that I have applies nature's toxin. And nature toxin, I can basically activate uh, by simply just, you know, pushing onwards and hitting people in the face, okay? Uh, whenever I activate my Q ability, I will automatically also apply the nature's toxin. Whenever I do a basic attack damage, I will apply nature's toxin. And the same goes for, uh, for my ultimates as well. Now, what is this nature's toxin thing? So, first off, um, it basically is, you know, not just like damage, but it also can be activated in order to um, apply a slow. So, what I can do is when this nature's toxin is on an enemy, which, by the way, applies damage over time, um, I can also activate my W ability, which will allow me to extend the duration of it, but also for me to actually uh, slow the enemies down significantly. And because I already have 20% extra movement speed because of my passive trait, it is oftentimes very, very useful uh, to go ahead and do exactly that. Um, now, most of the damage actually doesn't come from my Q ability, which I assumed at first. It actually comes from the W ability, especially later on into the game. So early on, I will be focusing on hitting my Q, which is this little circle of AoE damage that I can do. Uh, but later on, it will be mostly the W. Now, I'm going to go with the Skybound Wisp, uh, just because it's preference. At level 4, you can choose to upgrade your Wisp, which is the E ability. This is mainly just used for scouting. I'm going to try and do as much as I can with it, but... You know, for the moment, it's not really something I need to worry about too much. Just pick both of them, or pick all of them once and see which one you enjoy the most. No. Whew. Don't kill me. Do not kill me. Appreciate that. Thank you. You gotta run those siege tank. Don't you have your Z? Oh, I guess he didn't have his Z ability available. That's unfortunate. We did manage to get out of there ourselves. So, Q ability AoE circle that deals damage after a second and applies nature's toxin. W ability slows down enemies that are affected by nature's toxin and extends the duration of nature's toxin, uh, which is damage over time and a slow. And the E ability is mainly used for scouting. So, for example, right here, I can send the Wisp up top, figure out uh, on the minimap to see if someone is coming in. Now, I should probably be heading here as well now I think about it. Uh, playing and talking at the same time is rough, and most of the time I especially start forgetting abilities such as the W or such as the E. One thing to note as well about the Q ability that I haven't gone over yet is that the Q ability actually does apply um, or does actually do extra damage to minions now because of my very first talent selection but it also works on bosses and like on immortals and other you know um, big big creatures like that in the game so I don't know if that is meant to do the extra damage to it it says only mercenaries and minions but it also does damage to bosses and, and I like the immortals as well on like certain maps so I don't know exactly if that is meant to be like that by the way Gonna go ahead and kill this Wisp, which by the way it's killable with one single basic attack from every single hero. Alright, trying to slow him down right now, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to chase him. No real need for me to chase him either. But for now, uh, I'm just gonna try and make sure we grab as many seats as possible. Guys, can we... Oh man, we're still fighting in the mid lane. We're, we're having some messy fights going on. This is, by the way, nothing else than a quick match. So, that's probably one of the main reasons why. Um, but at level 7, we'll get a nice damage spike. And the damage spike we get is that every single basic attack after um, my uh, activation of the W ability, or not every single one of them, sorry, let me correct myself there, the next four basic attacks of me activating the W ability will automatically crit and do 50% more damage. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick the Wild Vigor. 
I would say the Wild Vigor, together with the Vigorous Spores that will pick at 16, are the two main important talents. The other ones are all up for change. Uh, but basically, right now, whenever I activate my W ability, I will automatically start critting with the next four attacks. So there's no timer on this or anything. I just simply, you know, activate it and it immediately starts critting. So, they just dumped in 2v4. I don't know if you should do that. Seems like a really bad idea. I'm going down right now. So, by the way, this Wisp I go for, uh, that I really do like, is uh, just simply gonna appear for a little bit longer, even if they kill it, which, technically speaking, is the best one. So, right now, whenever I W, you will see crit. 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 He's almost down, though, guys. Okay, there we go. I was gonna say, can we please finish him up? Oh, well, she just stood there. Whoa, 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 whoa. Woo! Super low in damage, or super low in, uh, in health. Did manage to get two kills there. So, everything is fine and dandy. Let's try and stick around for now. The wolf is on cooldown at this point, so I'm not really too worried about it. The wolf of uh, Thrall, that is. Okay. Looking down the plant pot immediately. Which is very important, because else we do end up falling. Okay, so very nice. Actually, one of us went for the mule. Very nice, actually. Cool. Trying to stay alive here. Obviously, don't want to go back too soon either. I've been pretty greedy with going back so far, but it should be alright at this point. Okay, very nice. So I'm gonna be sorting into hero damage. Most of the time early on, you're not gonna be topping the hero damage. That is acceptable. Especially past level 16, you become a force to be reckoned with. Um, a lot of the games that I do play with Lunara, we do end up you know, dealing most of the damage. But yeah, like uh, like I was mentioned, at level 17 and 16, I would say some of the talents are mandatory. Other than that, you can pretty, pretty much anything. So one of the things people love going for is the natural perspective, uh, which basically makes you a bit more of a specialist. And then the same, actually, some people like going for the Nature's Calling as well. That would highly recommend the Wild Figure. Uh, at level 4, you can pick whatever you enjoy the most and what you prefer the most. Uh, gonna set my Wisp over there, just to see if someone is incoming. Luckily for me, they don't have like a... Um, they don't really have anything uh, too scary in their team composition that I have to watch out for, other than, um, you know, just straight up damage. We're gonna go with the Thornwood Vine, and the Thornwood Vine is good for two things. First off, it does more damage than the other ultimate, which is, you know, a great thing. <laughs> it has a very nice upgrade at level 20 as well, which uh, is also a great thing. Uh, but most importantly, it gives me a way to apply my W ability. And that W ability, once again, applies... Um, or extends the Nature's Toxin, but then also allows my next four basic attacks to start hitting a little bit faster. And past level 16, we also get a lot of extra attack speed from that ability. So that's the main reason why I tend to be picking the Thornwood Vine. The other one is a lot of fun to mess around with as well. I would say very good as well if you have like low HP flimsy targets to pick off, but their team is not really... You know, I, I don't really I don't really want to go for it in this specific scenario. Thornwood Vine, in my experience at least, just simply is more damage. So this is a good example right here. He picked four, he picked the other one, he picked the other ultimate. And while it's good and all, and while it does give him a lot of maneuverability, since we're super flimsy anyway, if you're out of position, you're gonna be in trouble either way. So most of my damage comes from basic attacking. Just with every other basic attacking hero, or like a hero that focuses a lot on basic attacks, um, we have to make sure we position ourselves well. If you don't position yourself well, you're bound to go down immediately, and you know, that's one of the things you have to just live by, I suppose. If you don't enjoy, you know, positioning yourself well and uh, getting out of trouble that way, you're probably not gonna enjoy this hero all too much either. So I'm gonna have to get out of here. Oh my god, yeah, I did get hit right there by the wolf. A little overextension by me does end up costing me with my life. Not too good, but nice one. <laughs> that was a nice move by Mr. Avatar, uh, setting all of the traps up in that little bush and... Uh, you know, sadly, uh, sadly, uh, our Diablo player didn't quite see that that was a thing, but that was a good move. Alright, I may have to go ahead here and grab the Garden Terror as well. Uh, we are running relatively high damage dealers, so one of the damage dealers should grab it. And I guess I'll be the chosen one. Uh, but I would say this hero actually will see a lot of play as well in competitive scenes. I mean, it's one of the dedicated damage over time spells. She's extremely powerful when played correctly, and I would say she has the potential of wiping out the entire enemy team. Um, it's one of the few heroes that I would say actually really does make an impact. Um, obviously, it's not like Kilta's level, where you're like, okay, well, he's just gonna change the entire meta. 
Uh, but he's still extremely good. I could go for the Giant Killer. I could also go for the Greater Spell Shield. This is one of the talents where I really do sort of switch between the two. I did go for the Giant Killer in this specific scenario. Um, especially if they have heroes such as, like, um, Cho Gaul, for example, right? You want to go for the Giant Killer every single time. Um, but the, the Greater Spell Shield is extremely good. If they're, like, a damage focus composition and you're playing Quick Match like I am right now, you don't have a dedicated healer, it does give you a lot more sustain. Anyway, it's time to start slapping away at some towers. I have to make sure we do maximum amounts of damage here. This is fine. Trying to keep uh, the team alive here. Obviously more important than, uh, you know, just killing one dude. We'll be heading back to the middle lane then. There's a nice clump of mines uh, from the Abathur player here too, so it's a big chance they will be walking through it. If they're coming this way, that is. Oh my god, so nice. Oh, come on. Got him. Alright. So I'm really attacking a lot today <laughs> with, the, with the Garden Terror, which I guess is fine as well. <clears throat> Alright, let me get back into the battle. Not really joining very many of the team fights. I am going to go ahead and do so right now uh, from here on out, Rudder. Um, the team fights will obviously be very good at... Uh, upping our hero damage, and especially past 16, like I already mentioned, this is becoming one of the major aspects of the game. Like, we can do a ton of damage. At this point, we're not quite level 16 yet, so we're pushing the towers very aggressively here, just to get a little closer to it. I do need to make sure I head back. There we go. So I'm gonna pick the Invigorating Spores, and the Invigorating Spores makes it... Oh my god. I hope they're not gonna stick around, though. Guys, please leave. Please just leave. Uh, the Invigorating Spores basically just makes it so that every single time I hit a basic attack, or that every single time I hit my W ability, my basic attacks become 50%, uh, or twice as fast as well, so or I believe it's 50%? Yeah, 50% extra attack speed. Um, and on top of that, all of my basic attacks then also start critting, right? So, it's a huge, huge deal. It gives you a lot of extra sustain, and, you know, the damage output becomes extremely, extremely high. Once again, a ton of Abathur mines here. You're just putting them at the crossroads. Alright, we'll be heading over here as well. They're playing super aggressive, but for some reason, none of, none of us is getting picked up. Okay, nice. And you can see, like, it's just so much damage that immediately comes out of you. You can also go with the Starwood Spear, which some people really enjoy playing as well. That increases the range of your basic attacks, the next four basic attacks. But in good team fights, you can oftentimes just hit the W every two or three seconds, which just allows you 100% upkeep, even with the 50% attack speed. So. I would say the Invigorating Spores is a little bit better uh, for that very reason. Especially if you went for the level 7 talent here as well with the Wild Vigor. Um, a lot of extra damage comes out of it that way. Alright. So we are playing uh, a, a little bit messy. I'm not gonna lie. It doesn't help us a whole lot. But we can start pushing onwards here. Very good. I, I'm gonna need some help here. There we go. And you can see the first Q ability is actually very helpful in these sort of scenarios too. Well, I'm not really focusing on it too Oh, wow. I didn't even realize you were so extremely low in health, sir. I didn't even know where he was going. I don't think you want to fight us like that. Oh, maybe you do. Sadly, she does end up getting me. I should have probably drank from the fountain, although I thought I would be fine if I got behind the tower. So she wouldn't be able to land her, uh, her dagger on me as easily. Or, um... Actually, now I think about it. Now I think about it a little more. I should just drink the fountain real quick. I didn't want her to chase me down like that, but I was a little bit too low in health. Very unfortunate so far. Actually, damage-wise, we're a little bit lower than we're usually at. I'm gonna start joining every single team fight right now. We gotta start pushing that up. Everyone is very low in damage, actually. We gotta start making sure we uh, we are topping those damage meters once again, okay? That's gonna be the goal for the rest of the game. Um, but yeah, I would say this is by most of the game, for most of the games, my standard setup. And then at level 20, we also go for Forest Wrath, which just improves the R ability a little bit more. If you take a lot of damage or if you lack a healer or something like that, like we have in this game actually, the Greater Spell Shield is a very solid option as well. Although you do lose on a lot of damage uh, in combination with the Vigoring Spore and then the also, or the Invigorating Spores and the Wild Vigor. Um, 
both are very, very good at uh, cleaning up damage, but... Yeah, it's it's really a toss-up between the Greater Spell Shield and the Giant Killer. Um, some people really do like going for the Unfair Advantage as well, which helps a lot if you pick some of the other uh, Nature's Toxin talents earlier on into the match. Alright, time to get to the battle. This Diablo seems to be in fights all the time. What are you doing, bro? That's a risk. Oh my god! <laughs> that was unnecessary, man. Why didn't you just turn around? I guess he really likes to have the final hits, right? I guess he really does like the final hits. He can't get the kill steals in this game, but... Alright, so that slow right there is pretty much her death. Like, you immediately slowed her down by hitting that R ability on her, hitting the W immediately afterwards since he's down, right? It's a very, very nice way of killing enemies, and at this point, like, you can see just one of roll of my ultimates, which, by the way, can have a maximum of three charges, just simply starts killing people left and left and right. Very good. So, all in all, she's very, very powerful. You can also go ahead and get some extra movement speed to the Leaping Strike, and then go for the, um... The, uh, the other ultimate or the other upgrade to the level 10 ability um, at level 20 which gives you a lot more maneuverability because you can almost hatch onto anything and just start jumping around like a pony which is really fun but I would say this one is a little bit better for damage especially if you have more like a sustained composition like the double tank for example okay I'm gonna go back he should be down right oh man he isn't down okay he is down I was gonna say Guys, 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 we need to back up. We need to back up. I cannot stay there, though. I can really... Oh, man, I guess I can stay from... Or drink from the fountain real quick. Just so we can stay into the battlefield for a little longer. Yeah, he does end up falling there. I'm trying to ping him to retreat, but he didn't want to. Alright, I'm gonna head to the top lane, actually. Since all of the enemies are nearby. You know what? Let me see if I can clean this up real quick. This is a risk by me. But I do so much damage at this point that I think it's fine. I should have used the Whisper. Um, one of the abilities that I seem to not really use as often as I should is the Wisp. The Wisp is extremely good. Uh, it gives you a lot of vision. I just sort of don't use it as often as I should. Okay. Grabbing a lot of the seats. Alright, we'll clean up this thing real quick. And then, considering we have a, a, a second tank, I guess we should go ahead and ask... Wow. Um, ask uh, Muradin to grab this thing, but... For now, we'll just be heading back, grabbing the terror ourselves. Oh no! <laughs> I almost actually ended up falling there by, uh, by their abathur. Nope. Alright, I'll go ahead and grab it. Did go pretty well in the previous one. Okay, he wants to. I like how he communicates that right as I backed for it. Although I had to back anyway. He doesn't communicate for it very well. Uh, we don't have a regular mount, by the way, which I guess I already pointed out earlier. We just get 20% extra attack speed, or movement speed, rather, um, by default. And it actually helps out a lot in combination with the W ability to get out of trouble. Wow, I gave you the plan that you put down the plant pot right there. I guess it blocks the, the vision a little, but... I don't know if that plant pot positioning was the bestest in the world, sir. Okay. Don't want to be lacking out in this team fight again. We we'll start pushing onwards. Okay, I did get a hit on her, but sadly won't be able to get her down. She will be getting behind the tower, I'm sure. I'm gonna have to back up here. Away! <laughs> she does end up falling. I should have just let my team clean her up, I suppose, but it's very difficult to get away from here. Um, while we do have some extra movement speed, the range on her abilities is pretty insane, and uh, we once again do end up falling there. Already falling three times in this game. Generally speaking, not really the amount of times uh, you do want to go down for. Uh, but I guess all of the deaths have been okay-ish. One or two, I guess I could have been or I could have prevented if I played slightly differently. Uh, but this is going pretty well here. You don't have any vision, bro. What are you doing? There we go. <laughs> wow, really? Really, Abathur? Whew. You're just gonna sit there together? Really? Hand in hand? 
Oh man. Sometimes I don't understand siege tank players. Like they just <laughs> they just sit there hoping that enemies are gonna close in. I really do enjoy playing the siege tank as well, but it seems to not be the correct way of doing it. Anyways, like damage-wise, as you can see, we start pushing ahead a little bit more. We just were actually first before I ended up going down. Uh, with uh, Sergeant Hammer just inching ahead at this point. There's Sonya actually getting a lot of extra damage done as well. Interestingly enough, even though she's technically considered a warrior and the main reason why they didn't get a dedicated tank is working out well for us. Um, let's move uh, Let's move together as S5. Come on, please. Come on, Sergeant Hammer. That's so risky, bro. You'd have no idea where they're located at the moment. You're just gonna sit there? Well then. Alright. Uh, let's move S5. I guess that's not really what move as 5 means, but it's okay. Oh god. How did he even run into a siege tank like that? You know he's got mines, right? Can we come can we come mid? Let's move together. <laughs> that's not how you write the word together, Loco, but it's fine. I've noticed that especially in quick match, communicating with the team is very difficult, even though everyone speaks fluent English. It's hard to make it work. Alright, we should probably be heading to the top lane then. Sending my wisp out, trying to figure out where they're located. It's really all about the team fights at this point. Okay, nice. So we are moving together now. That's huge. Don't don't overthrow her, bro! You literally gave her a way to escape. Why would you overpower her like that? That makes no sense, Diablo. What was that logic? You literally overpowered her to safety. Oh well. Taking off the mines real quick. That made no sense though. That was a very irrational thing to do. Alright, here we go. Pressing the W ability whenever I can. Oh man, that was a lot of damage immediately. Okay, slowing them down now. Don't know if I will be able to survive here. I think I will. So I had to I had to land the R ability there. I had one chance. And then I did manage to get out of there just barely in time. That's the only real way you can get out of trouble. Hitting the R ability and then hitting the W. If you go for the level 20 talent to upgrade the boundless strike right there with the leaping strike, you can you can still win. But oh maybe it was a bot that actually did that on the Abra, I'm not certain. But overpowering to safety. That's that's kind of a painful thing. Oh, that's fine. Alright, I'll be heading in here as well. Oh my god. Oh my god, Diablo, why are you doing this to me? Oh man. Overpower in itself is, is kind of good. <laughs> it's basically when he throws it over, so he threw over Sonya to her safety, by the way. If I didn't explain that properly. Okay, let's head down to bot. We can still definitely win this one, although it's getting a little scary. Late game, you usually just want to focus on hitting the team fights as much as possible with a lot of your Ws and just dealing damage with your rolling, uh, with your rolling thorns. Okay, so the entire team is dead except for Muradin and uh, and Abathur and me. Uh, which really just only means that there's two of us dead, but <clears throat> since there's only so little map presence by us, since we do have an Abathur, it seems like it's very empty. Okay, this is fine. Picking out the spores immediately. 
Oh my god! I guess that was only a copy, but still. There we go. Oh man, once again, I do get uh, Envenomed to death and Sylvanas once again has my number. I think she killed me three times so far in this game. She just activates all of her cooldowns on me. I think, yeah, she must have definitely taken the Envenom there and then also just hitting all of the other abilities. Very unfortunate, actually. You would imagine she does go for a little bit less of a damage focus when playing without a healer, but uh, it's mostly just a mistake on our end for at this point. Like, we get a little bit too close to her. I wasn't aware that Sylvanas was in that terror. I should have checked, like, who was missing and stuff, but... Uh, it's a rough one. It's a rough one. I definitely know that she has a lot of chance at killing me off immediately, and I think most of the time I do end up playing Lunara a little bit too close. Um, you know, to the enemies. You can you can stand at quite a little bit of distance, it's just that since you already you already have a little bit extra movement speed, you can just close the distance a little faster when there's team fights happening anyway, so moving extremely aggressively usually isn't gonna be worth it. Man, these fights are so messy. You're not gonna make that, bro. Well, with Abathur, I guess... <laughs> these fights are so silly. These fights are so silly. Abathur versus... Uh, versus Abathur, really. To just have sort of host in Sonya and Diablo. Parasites. Alright, level 24 versus level 24. That doesn't happen a whole, lot, uh, a whole lot often anymore in this game. I haven't seen, uh, I haven't le seen level 25 in a very long time. Okay, so we're starting to push more and more aggressively here. Normally the games do take obviously a whole lot less long, especially on this map actually. Just because you can uh, close out the game a lot faster nowadays. But if you don't get the Garden Terror up, it's, it's rough to make it work. Alright, so we almost have a Terror available. I'm gonna go ahead and grab it. And go straight for the core, if I can. I'll take it. I don't I didn't really like your skills very much on that Muradin. Okay, here we go. Let's take control of it. So this tower right now is extremely powerful. They become more powerful over time. At this point, we can disable the core as well with the W ability, which is very important. Alright, oh, well, I guess I'm gonna have to run out. Unless they really want to take a team fight with us in the terror, then it's fine for us as well. I can go ahead and tank a lot of the damage. Even though I'm sort of meant for killing buildings, if I slap away at them, I will still do a significant amount. I'm actually killing one of their highest damaging heroes at this point. Alright. Hey. Gotcha. I do need some help though, boys. I'm not gonna be able to do this by myself, I'm afraid. Can I get some help? What are you doing there, Siege Tank? Siege Tank, please! Siege Tank! <laughs> the Siege Tank doesn't want to help, guys. He's busy sitting in the bush. <laughs> He's just waiting for someone to get in range. Alright, interesting. I'm sorry for anyone that uh, the main Sergeant Hammers, and you have to deal with Sergeant Hammers in teams like that. Alright, so we're body blocking pretty aggressively. Now let's start hitting the core. We can hit the core pretty aggressively now too. Although, not without any support, I'm afraid. We have very little life remaining. But if we can, we'll take out another, another fort here. Uh, it looks like we can indeed do that, even though we have, like, no life remaining. Oh, man. Okay. Very good. He's actually laning away at the core now. That's a risk, sir. But I guess if there's 50 seconds remaining, we can actually do this. We can just hit the core, guys. I hope that, um, that we'll get Diablo here. Yeah, Diablo does move in. Okay, we have a chance of just straight up winning here. And we're pushing the core aggressively. Looks like it's gonna be enough. As always, I will include the talent build that I went for in this specific game down below the like button as well in the description of this video. And I want to thank you all for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile. And I'll see you in the next one.